I've been working really hard on printing a whole bunch of parts, sanding, priming, welding, doing all that together. Here's where we're at. Where I have come to. This is what it's all been leading to. Now, with all of these parts, I plan to get ahead as much as I can on this weekend day and finish it all together and getting hung up on this body armor suit thing. So, I don't have any topic for this video, none of that. I'm just gonna be working away and you guys following along. See how far we can get. I hope to have everything sanded at least once, primed, PLA welded, and I got all the harness stuff and maybe even get it hung up and put on this stand. We'll see how we go, because I know that's very overzealous. All right, so uh, I got these all taped up correctly, and we're gonna test out this new metallic dark steel. I'm excited with for it, because uh, I used the same exact thing, but uh, pure gold for the gold mask, metallic Bristolium, and I loved it. So let's see if the dark steel color is what we want for the outlining of the helmet here, and then we'll test out the red later. Whew. All right, so we got this new guy here, palm sander. Uh, we also have this detailed one that I've been using, and it's taking me forever because it's only for details. And I'm just going to sand these parts up here, uh, weld them together first, and uh, get some uh, wood filament on, uh, on them. And once we get all of that together nice, then I'll start really sanding it together as one piece because I want it to, you know, weld together. And then uh, we're going to work on the abs. All right, so I got these uh, taped up exactly how I want them, and it's time to do some PLA welding. Ah, oh, man, oh man, I really am conflicted about this color. It looks really nice. It really does. And it's got this nice kind of, uh, you know, metallic feel to it. You can really tell it, a little sparkle. Um, I like it. I, I do. <laughs> but it's still a little light. Um, I'm going to give it some time to dry. We'll see. Um, it looks nice with the gold because I do want to keep this gold. This is perfect, but uh, now the red is being changed and we're going to test some uh, crimson dark red metallic tonight. But man, I, I conflicted about this one. I was hoping for it to be more darkish, but still looks so nice. Also, finished uh, sanding out the layer shift out of this guy. The uh, wood uh, bond there. And um, now we're going to do a higher grid all over these two guys. And then I'm going to prime them again. So hopefully they'll be done until time for final paint touch-ups and maybe trims. I don't think these parts need a lot of trimming. This one might. And then we're going to have the abs. Ooh, it's a busy day. All right, so I'm trying to give you guys more insight of, you know, techniques I'm using and what I've trying to change i'm almost trying to experiment so i'm mixing in between these two tools actually um, i think this is 150 grit on this guy and this is 240 on this guy so i started with 80 on the big guy 80 also on this one for the detailed parts because it's a nice triangle shape 150 all over and then i was like you know what let me try 200 on everything i'm using the, these parts and uh looks it, it feels really nice i mean with my nail it's smooth as can be um so same thing with this guy, really smooth out. Very, very happy how this turned out. So uh, I'm curious to see how uh, the primer will look on top of it. So that's the next part. All right, so this is what round two of sanding and priming has done. And I can barely see line. This is perfect. And the bicep is coming out really well. I can still slightly see the line for sure. Um, but especially with sunlight and shadow, it kind of gets accented. So when you put up very quickly, you can barely see it. So pretty happy. Whew, just finished sanding this guy and uh, now time to prime him. All right, here it is. Um, man, I really need to sand a lot better before I prime the first coat. It just looks perfect like it's done. I love this back. It looks great. Bicep looks good. I think about, a, about as good of a job I could with the print deformity. And uh, I don't know, I'm starting to kind of like this. this is dark steel. It's starting to get a little darker and it doesn't look too bad. It 
looks decent with the gold. It's hard to tell that red is such a contrast, but yeah, I might stick with this paint. Well, decided to rain today. <laughs> Got a little unlucky, but it's okay. We uh, spray painted and primed a decent amount. So um, unfortunately I didn't get to the abs, um, but I'm gonna try to do that by just uh, quickly running out when it's not raining and uh, standing out here, because I don't want all that stuff inside. I don't want all the dust and all that coming off of it. And I'm gonna weld them together. So you guys will see that process of me welding them. And then we're going to do some more priming, if the weather allows. And the last part tonight, that I'm gonna hopefully finish before the day ends, I call our break, hanging up all the suit together with the harness. So this is probably the best sanding job I've ever done before priming. I'm kind of testing out different things to see the effects of, you know, how much sanding is overkill, how much is not. So um, this one I did actually 80, then 150, then 240. And I mean, it's really smooth. So I'm gonna about to PLA weld it, show you guys how that works. And then I'm going to prime it. All right, so excuse the big old workplace mess. I usually like it cleaner, but <laughs> abs are a little tricky. I probably should have decided to film a different one that I weld, but uh, as you see, they're very big and they kind of stick out because they're round. So there's a lot of weight going on and all that. It's kind of hard to keep them together. And I know I could have used duct tape. The reason I use a uh, painter's tape, which is a lot weaker, it's a lot easier for me to take it off and put it back on. And while I'm taping these up, um, I'm kind of fidgeting around, moving it, so it's, you know, millimeter, millimeter perfect. What you want to look out for is basically make sure the corners at the ends are, you know, good and lined up. The middle looks right. And the other part is, remember, you, you usually, I mean, I do always weld from the back because I don't want anyone to see my mess. You want to make sure that it lines up and there's the most minimal gap that you can see from the front. So I made sure I ensured that. Um, it's taped up all along the seam in the front, actually. I'm not going to show you guys because I don't want to move this. Um, but also, I know it's taped up here. But what I'm going to do is, you know, I'm going to start welding right here. And mark what, as I work my way down, I'll take off the tape and keep going so that, you know, it doesn't lose structural integrity. It's got, you know, other stuff that's holding it in place. And that's kind of how I do it. Well, here you have it. Peely welded. Done. Probably saw me kind of uh, doing a weird thing in that time lapse going, you know, moving my head around and running around. <laughs> you don't want to breathe this in. So I'm in an open garage, basically outside. Well ventilated areas, what you want to do. You don't want to bring it in. It's toxic. It's not good for you. And uh, it smells bad anyways. And uh, unfortunately, I can't really find a mask. It'd be easier if I had a mask, but uh, COVID. So they're kind of out of stock of those. So I just made sure to hold my breath basically, and then I'll run, catch a nice breath of air outside, go back to welding. So it turned out very well. You might have noticed I would take off the tape and kind of observe it, look at it from the front once it had a little bit more structural integrity, make sure everything lined up well. And I mean, from the side angle, you, you can barely tell this is really good. It's not gonna need too much um, wood filler at all. And once we sand that down with the wood filler, and paint this it will be uh almost a unnoticeable line there you go there you have it here's what it looks like from the back so here's the product with wood filler i'm actually gonna say it right this time and what i do is uh more is better put a whole bunch of it i actually use one of these and i know this is not the proper use of the tool but i use one of these um tiny little knives I use usually for cleaning supports of my prints and I scrape off especially right here in these little corners right here all the excess of wood filler make sure there's a clear defined line and sometimes I kind of scrape it off to make it a little even in between but it's okay if there's too much uh, you don't even have to really do that um, 
or just get it all, knock it all down during the sanding process. I just find it kind of a little bit better, easier before it dries to do that. So now I'm gonna wait for it to dry and then sand it down. And then finally, it is time for the priming stage. So a day's work, where do we come to? Abs are fully complete. The back top half, which you can't see because he's lying this way, is done. I actually have these two uh, parts finished for the lower back. So they just need to be welded, sanded, primed, you know the deal, connected. So the whole back is done, uh, partly not processed. Arm has been done, and the chest is completely nicely finished up. The gunmetal-ish look on the side looks pretty good. You can really see it right there with all three colors. Now that red I'm changing. I'm definitely going to try a different one. I'm going to do that later. But yeah, neck piece is done. Started strapping some of it in. You guys can't really see that. Um, it was a failure. <laughs> uh, abort, mission abort, it did not work out, but that's okay. I learned. Uh, we're going to try a different way to get this harness system together. But there you go, guys. That's what a day's work gets you.